Hello friends, welcome back to the shop and welcome to the first in what I'm hoping will be a series of videos on uh, lighters. Uh, lighters that uh, ostensibly can be used as pipe lighters, but just lighters in general. I kind of became interested in this accidentally. Uh, you'll remember a while back I did a, a couple of videos on restoring a Nimrod lighter and I thought, you know, that was kind of fun and before you know it I started to accumulate lighters. So I've, I've always liked Zippos and I still do like Zippos, but there's some pretty interesting lighters out there with lots of unique history. So I thought it might be fun to do a few videos like this. So this lighter is a uh, Park lighter and Park lighters were made by the Park Sherman Company and I'm going to give you a little bit of history about them. Uh, Park Sherman was actually in uh, Springfield, Illinois from the early 1930s, but to really trace the history you got to go back uh, a fair amount earlier than that to 1913 to the Shanklin Manufacturing Company. This was founded by George Shanklin and interestingly they made uh, mining implements and in particular George Shanklin copyrighted a carbide miner's lamp uh, in 1913 and his company was incorporated shortly after that. The Unfortunately around 1930 the Shanklin Manufacturing Company uh, had to shut down because of the depression and it was obtained by Park Sherman and Park Sherman continued to make the uh, mining apparatus, the lamps and things like that uh, and in particular became known for a popular lamp called the Storm King lamp and later on we'll probably look at a Storm King lighter uh, in a future video. But Park Sherman eventually became better known for producing uh, cigarette lighters and it appears that they were very uh, very uh, commonly making lighters like this which were used as promotional items for bars, uh, auto dealerships, diners, all, all sorts of things. So th this, uh, we can somewhat date this because in 1960, Park Sherman was actually sold to a firm called uh, Ketchum and McDougall. And Ketchum and McDougall moved Park Sherman from Springfield, Illinois to Murfreesboro, I can't say this, Murfreesboro, there we go, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. So this lighter has on it markings that I, hope will show up on the video here but what it says is park lighter murfreesboro tennessee usa so that tells us that this lighter was likely made uh in the early 1960s and it is an advertisement for jack neely motors in bessemer alabama car country i've tried to research jack neely motors and was not able to come up with any information on it however one of my viewers uh, sent a comment that uh, said that he remembers seeing Jack Neely motor signs when he was growing up in uh, Bessemer, Alabama. So, very, very interesting. Okay, the lighter itself has some, it, it's basically a Zippo knockoff, but it's got a few unique points to it that I think are worth uh, taking a look at. So, first off, it's got, the, you know, the, the cap's got a nice satisfying click when it closes. When it opens, it's just kind of springing loose, and that's because the mechanism is a bit different from a Zippo. Uh, let me grab my Zippo here. You know, Zippo, as you probably know, has this cam locking mechanism here. Uh, that guy right there. And you get that nice pinging sound when you open it, and nice click. This guy is relying on a somewhat different mechanism where you get the click but no ping. So let's take a look at that. Um, basically, instead of the cam, there's just a piece of spring steel here on the side. It's attached by a single rivet, and it engages with another piece here on the lid. And together, once they cross that critical point, they kind of spring together and hold the, the cap closed. So a very simple mechanism. Uh, nice thing about this is you can adjust it. You know, if the lighter is not holding, you know, if it gets if it gets loose, you could just bend this out a little bit and tighten it up. The rest of the lighter is very similar to Zippo. It's got a, a tank here. This actually appears to be an aluminum tank, and the the outside is anodized aluminum. The um, 
striker is similar to Zippo. Uh, yeah, you got the striker wheel and a flint coming up from inside, and of course you got a wick in that uh, combustion chamber. If we look at the bottom, uh, you can see the screw there that holds the the flint in place, and I'll I'll remove that. It's a bit rusted. I should probably clean that up a bit. So there's the the screw with the spring attached and the little um, I don't know what that thing's called, but <laughs> the little pusher that holds the flint in place. And of course there'll be a there should be a flint in there. Oh, maybe the flint was just about done on this one. Nothing came out. Um, hope it's not jammed in there. There it is. So there's our flint. Now, what's really intriguing about this, uh, at least I thought it was intriguing, is that the felt pad, you know, normally this felt pad would lift up and you would fill it below. Well, this does not do that. This is actually a solid piece of felt that goes all the way up into the bottom of the tobacco chamber. Uh, the bottom of the, t the bottom of the fuel chamber. Sorry guys, I'm used to talking about pipes. <laughs> And if you look down in there, you can see the wick, which is kind of all pressed up uh, against the top there. There's, there's no way that you can snake the wick through this because it's, it's just a solid piece. Um, when I first got it, it needed a little bit of work. Uh, it was in fairly good condition, uh, essentially the condition that you see here. But there was a flint jammed in the, in the, 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 the flint tube, so I took a, an appropriate size drill and I just kind of hand twisted it until I broke through and then I loaded in a new flint. And it worked fine after that. I thought about changing this and, and I wanted to see how it worked first. And surprisingly, this works really well. This, uh, this held for uh, about three days on one fill. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I think I'm just gonna keep it as is since that's kind of the original um, design. The neat thing about it is you do not have to lift anything to fill it. You just squirt the fluid right on top there. So let me go ahead and tighten this back up. And I'll get some fluid. Just using regular Zippo fluid here. And you can see it just sinks right down into that felt. That should be enough. Let's see. Yeah, it might take a minute for it to get down to that wick. I mean, that's the one flaw in this design is that, you know, Zippo with just that little bit of fluid, the wick would have caught some of it and it would have lighted. Uh, lighted? Lit? Let's put some more fluid in. Now you'd have to fill this a bit more slowly because it'll obviously pour over the top. Oh, there we go. It's not going to take more than that apparently. All right, so I just gave that a little bit of time for the fluid to kind of permeate through. And uh, hopefully we'll see the, the thing light now. There we go. Um, very reliable light. Uh, works really well. It's not a pipe lighter, obviously. So if you're using it on a pipe, you got to be careful and, you know, find the right angle and all that. But it's a neat little lighter. And uh, I like the size of it. I like that cool little mechanism there. And I, I, I think the felt pad is kind of intriguing. So, that's the story of uh, the park lighter, the Jack Neely Park Lighter. Hope you enjoyed that, and uh, I've kind of developed a little bit of a lighter acquisition disorder, so there'll probably be more videos coming. If you want to see them, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. That really helps get the word out. Thank you guys, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.